11th. April 11th. Um, IFC, um, Sundance Selects is the um, distributor. And uh, tell your friends this is really an honor to have us here as our opening night. Um, let me start by asking, how did, how did you two meet? How did this project happen? Where, how did it um, all start? I met Pierre in 2000 when I optioned his rights to make a movie called Take the Lead, starring Antonio Banderas, which was inspired by Pierre's journey into the public schools of New York to teach the kids to ballroom dance in 1994, when ballroom dancing was not cool and there was no dancing with the stars. So he started with 30 kids, and he's now taught over 400,000 children. <laughs> Amazing. So Pierre is an example. <laughs> yeah, example. So when he called me to say he was about to fulfill his lifelong dream, I said, I'm going with you. I found my team, and off we went. Pierre, let me ask you. You've taught children definitely um, here in New York, but all over the world. How is this experience unique? Um, apart from the fact that it was your home, what was unique about the kids there? Well, basically, let's face it, I mean, we have children right here. When they were 10 years old in fifth grade, they didn't want to touch each other, did you? <laughs> it was not easy. Not true. <laughs> you wanted, okay, fine. <laughs> You're mature for your age. <laughs> um, but, but the big difficulty um, in Israel, when you have communities, religious differences, uh, was to get the uh, Muslim community to dance together. That was because of the traditions. Um, and then that was a big obstacle. The second obstacle was to get them to dance with the other community. I'm just calling them at the moment the enemy. Um, the uh, Jewish Israelis, it was okay because they, were, you know, they wanted to be cultured even more. Uh, but to dance with the their other side was very, very difficult. So, but, you know, it, it happened. I can't, I've seen this movie now about a dozen times. I cannot believe I did it. <laughs> And, and can I just add to that, Please. how hard was it for you to even get the, the Palestinian Israeli schools on board? <laughs> he got a yarmulke. <laughs> I tore my hair out. It was not easy. It was not, it's not easy to get kids all over the world, you know, never mind uh, when it's not part of your culture. Does, does it continue? Does the program continue? And what has happened to these kids since? The program is continuing with our site director. We are in five countries and 31 cities around the world, mainly in America. And we are in Jordan, in Amman in Jordan, as well as in Israel. And it's opening in Haifa with one Arab school and one Jewish school as we speak. Um, so Miri Shahaf is the lady who's our site director. And she does not do what I'm doing, what I did to bring the two communities exactly together on a weekly basis. But on the 20th lesson, we have what we call the culminating event, the Hafle, the party. And we have the Jewish communities, children and parents, as well as the uh, Palestinian Israeli communities, go to the Arab Jewish Community Center in Jaffa, where they have food and dancing all together. So yes, it's continuing. Add, but Dan, add something. Yeah, can I just say, we started yeah. with 150 kids, and it's been two years, and now over 1,400 children have gone through the program. And I'll tell you about the kids. Yes, you, you know the kids very well. Um, so first of all, uh, we screened in Doc Aviv. It was the opening night, and then we screened in the Cinematheque, and they're still screening all over Israel since May. And um, a lot of them are coming to the screenings. <laughs> I see them a lot. Um, and uh, we are hoping, actually, to bring... Uh, Alan, Noor, and Lois to New York in April. So, and they're good. A lot of them are still in touch. I mean, uh, in general. Facebook. Facebook, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can all connect to them and to us on Facebook. Yeah, yeah I just yeah, can I just say Diane, one yeah, please, thing? Yes, Diane, say it. <laughs> if you Push. all see the value of this program and the the power of this movie and what Pierre has done, please take out your phones now and <laughs> like us on Facebook. It will start to build a dialogue so when the movie opens in April, we can communicate with you, you can tell your friends, and you can get people to come. And that's how we're going to get this program in every school, in every city, in every country, and transform many more yes. lives. Yes. <laughs> Say ya. So please, <laughs> please. And you can also go to our website, um, dancinginjaffa.com, which right just launched today. today. Yeah. I want to take your questions, but first, first, let's give another round of applause to the children here who performed amazingly. 
And I'd like to hear from you guys your reaction to this film. Did you like it? Did you... How, how was the dancing? How was the quality of dancing? <laughs> they, have, they have something to learn. <laughs> they should come here to New York, have a, have a real um, uh, multicultural dancing program. Um, over to your questions. Anybody have any? All the way up on top. Thank you. problem with the competitive aspect of it. And I wondered what your thinking was uh, as of ha having a competition as you did with people, kids being rejected, as opposed to simply having a dance performance. Well, if I may just take that, um, I started the next year, actually this, this coming year right now, 2014, will be our 20th anniversary of Dancing Classrooms. And um, so that's a big, big number, but we've been, we've been, and I didn't want to read, I don't like the word competition. This is why we call it the Colors of the Rainbow Team Match. Each school sends five, six boys, six girls, and they dance each dance, and they add their points together. But, um, but you know, the kids are in competition every single day in their classroom to get an A, A plus, B, C, whatever it is. And so, unless there's an ending, especially uh, for the children, for our culminating event, it doesn't really work. And it really started with getting, because as Diane said, in 1994, ballroom dancing was a very well kept secret. Now, one school started to dance, we would meet with seven, eight, ten other schools, and these children will get to know, oh, we're not the only ones doing it, other kids do it. And so, although I don't like the word competition, we call it a team match, just to go backwards. First, I want to congratulate all of you for a vibrant, moving, and meaningful film. And my question is, how much more did you shoot? Because I'm guessing that there was, I don't know how you many hours of footage. <laughs> how much did you shoot? And at what point did you decide that Noor, Allah, and Lois would be a focus for behind the scenes? So, Wonderful. Uh, first of all, Daniel can tell you that uh, all through the four months, um, of the shooting of the PRS program, we shot about every day, six days a week. There are three weeks of uh, Passover vacation, but we were still shooting. <laughs> he went away, but we kept shooting. Um, Noor was one of the, I mean, one of the challenges uh, for me to, in this film was to choose the kids because there are 150 kids and who to choose from. Uh, there are a few decisions we made from the beginning uh, that we want to focus on, you know, um, one Jewish school and one Arab school that we knew will dance together. Noor was one of the first kids uh, we picked because one of the things is that uh, the program is known to help the kids that uh, needed help the most. Uh, and Noor had uh, social problems and she was not very good in school, uh, which the program also helps uh, Pierre. She wasn't anyone. coming to school. For she wasn't coming to school. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and then she came, I think it was just the seventh lesson where she first came to the school. But we were kind of looking to find her before that. So she was one of the people we, but we also filmed many kids who never made a cut and we were very disappointed not to see themselves uh, more than like few, a little bit in the film. Thank you for the gift of this film. It really is wonderful, and I appreciate all your endeavors. Um, my question is, I know you said that um, in the future, are these kids going to be followed to see, not on Facebook, but if they will keep in touch with each other personally? And do you have the optimistic wish that this really will be a bridge, you know, bridge the gap? First, I think this was a life-changing experience for these kids. And I can tell you is that as Israeli, we always like to think that, you know, Jaffa and Haifa, they're mixed. They're, you know, everybody's together. And, and there are exceptions. Neta's best friend growing, uh, growing up um, is a Palestinian Israeli. But in general, you can see it to me, the fact that Allah, barely speak Hebrew, just says it all. Um, so it was definitely a life-changing experience for most of these kids. Um, is it going to change the situation? I think that's a drop in the sea. And every day I open the newspaper, I am hoping for a new, um, you know, 
uh, things, you know, new news, but so far, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know, I'm hoping, but we need more of that. But as Pierre always says, if you change the children, you change the future. Yes. And the so opening it's a line, start. when you touch someone, something happens. And, um, and with our children right now, I mean, you know very well, ladies and gentlemen, we live in New York City, how many ethnicities do we have all, all together? And we do have underlying you know, difficulties with each other, but when our kids dance with each other, they get to know each other in such a different way. And, uh, and my hope, my wish, as I said in the taxi, is that if you can respect yourself, you can respect other people, and as we say in Arabic, inshallah. Inshallah. And, and I think that's the, that's the bottom line here. It's, we want to eat. You teach uh, beyond dance and you teach respect, and that's a, a, a beautiful thing, and I saw it here with these kids uh, today. Um, folks, please continue this conversation. We're going to be continuing this conversation all week, um, but right now, let's not continue the conversation in this room. Let's do it over food upstairs. We'll see you outside um, over a glass a of wine. A Drew's piece yeah? uh, from Gazala. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.